Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the QT Faculty of Law, to our symposium on copyright law and the creative industries. Uh, the purpose of this event is to bring together creative practitioners, uh, cultural, institutional representatives, and uh, legal academics and lawyers uh, to discuss the intersection between copyright law, creativity, and culture. As is always the case at QT, um, in keeping with the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands where QT now stands and recognise that these have always been places of teaching and learning. We wish to pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge the important role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continue to play within the QT community. Uh, my presentation today is on Lady Ada, Lima Freed, Ada Fruit Industries, intellectual property and open source hardware. And this presentation really comes out of work that I've been doing on intellectual property and 3D printing. And as part of that work, I've really been thinking a little bit about open source hardware. Uh, previously, I have been doing quite a lot of work on open innovation movements. So open biology, open agriculture, open medicine, uh, and as a kind of an extension of that, I've always been interested in strategies relying upon open licensing. So open source software certainly comes to mind, the Creative Commons movement, which relies upon licensing. The open source hardware movement has now been going for a decade uh, and has a number of centres. Uh, notably, uh, CERN has been very interested in open source hardware as a strategy for making all sorts of material more widely available. Um, but we've seen the emergence of open source hardware companies uh, like Adafruit Industries. So this talk in many ways is kind of part of that larger project on intellectual property and 3D printing. Uh, but it kind of delves into uh, open source hardware So to begin with, uh, Lady Ada is, of course, a reference to Ada Lovelace, um, Lord Byron's daughter, uh, early computer programmer, uh, helped with the programming of the Babbage engine, the world's first computer. Uh, they kind of have a copy of it at the Computer History uh, Museum uh, in Silicon Valley and Mountain View, just across the road from Google. Um, Lady Ada, or Ada Lovelace, has really become a rallying point, um, particularly for addressing some of the gender imbalances and distortions within the STEM community. Um, so Ada Lovelace Day um, has become a big focal point uh, to champion uh, women engineers, inventors, tinkerers, and technology developers. Uh, so this presentation uh, towards the end of October 2020, in some ways is also my response to Ada Lovelace Day. Uh, in terms of my methodology, I, I was quite interested by uh, work done last year by visiting Professor Eva hemmings Wurton, in which she kind of told the story of Marie uh, Curie and then wove around her interactions with intellectual property uh, within her manuscript, so looking at questions about copyright and patents and even celebrity rights. And I thought that would be an interesting approach to apply within the maker community. So really my presentation today is partly uh, a profile, a piece of biographical writing about Lemur Freed. Uh, Lady Ada for short. And I, I'm, in some ways I think that is also kind of a useful corrective to the cult of personality that exists in relation to information technology where we have veneration of Bill Gates, uh, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Um, I thought it would be a useful antidote to um, some of the lionising of the men of information technology by exploring the story of Lady Ada. She uh, is a leading figure in the open source hardware community. 
Her company, Adafruit Industries, has the most open source hardware certifications. She participated in the first open source hardware summit and helped draft the open source hardware definition. Um, she studied at MIT. She obtained a Bachelor of Science in Electric Engineering and Computer Science in 2003 and a Master of Engineering in 2005. She wrote an anti-surveillance project called Social Defence Mechanisms, Tools for Reclaiming Our Personal Space, uh, which has become a bit of a cult paper for those interested in uh, privacy law and policy. Lemo Fred established Adafruit Industries in 2005. The company focuses on the design and sale of open source electronic kits, components and tools. Adafruit Industries has been profiled as one of the kitchen table industrialists of local manufacturing by the New York Times. In an interview, Lady Ada discusses the business model in respect of Adafruit Industries. I like to say that Adafruit is a tutorial company and an educational company and we have a gift shop at the end. She added, I want to make a world where everyone is a maker, everyone's creative with electronics. There have been a number of profiles of the company as a successful open business. Um, Professor Dana Bertelman has reflected even though open source hardware products face considerably greater hurdles to overcome compared to open source software products, um, in a hybrid business community commercial business model, economic value can be captured from open source hardware inventions. Um, the work of uh, Lady Adder and Adafruit industry also taps into the larger maker movement. Chris A uh, Anderson, the author of Makers, interviewed a later Lady Adder on the DIY revolution in 2011. And he asked the question, what characterises the 21st century maker model to you? And Lady Ada responded that there are a range of sites which encourage sharing and collaboration in respect of maker products. We have Instructables and iFixit and Etsy and Make and Hackaday and our own Ada Fruit. So people who used to do this stuff alone now have even more community. It used to just be freaks in garages now it's freaks and garages working together. And she stressed the importance of saving and sharing projects online. Now you can pick and choose from existing technologies and other people's work. Now having a community like Instructables or Etsy where people actually help each other, people are using the plans and making them even better. Rather than relying upon proprietary protection, Adafruit Industries has espoused a philosophy of open source hardware. Um, so open source hardware has kind of been particularly well articulated by the Open Source Hardware Association led by Alyssa Gibbs. Uh, Adafruit kind of notes, open source hardware is hardware whose design is made publicly available so that anyone can study, modify, distribute, make and sell the design or hardware based on that design. The hardware's source, the design from which it is made, is available in the preferred format for making modifications to it. Ideally, open source hardware uh, uses readily available components and materials, standard processes, open infrastructure, unrestricted content and open source design tools to maximise the ability of individuals to make and use hardware. Uh, so really, uh, Adafruit Industries has also kind of played a really important role in building up this community, which is now kind of focused around the Open Source Hardware Association. In my presentation today, I really want to kind of focus upon some of the uh, tensions that exist between the model of open source hardware and the various regimes of intellectual property. Copyright law, trademark law, design patents, patent law and trade secrets. And I think Lady Ada and Adafruit Industries are interesting in terms of their practical pragmatic engagement with the intellectual property system. 
as well as their push for law reform in relation to intellectual property to make it uh, more flexible and accommodating of some of the community and business strategies that it employs. In terms of copyright law and open source hardware, uh, Liam Freed uh, has given a speech on the importance of, op of the open model. Um, so very much he has kind of looked back to previous generations of the free software movement, open source licensing, the Creative Commons movement. Uh, she has been very interested in how they've used licensing uh, and community work to try to improve upon inventions. She thinks in relation to the open source methodology that that is very helpful and useful. She says, I do open source hardware because I think it makes me a better engineer. Engineering is really important to me because it's sort of my art form. So I, I quite like that concept because it breaks down the usual conception of, say, copyright law as merely being about cultural creations from Lady Arda's perspective. Uh, culture and engineering are very much intertwined. Engineering is very much an art form. Um, but she kind of also says that, you know, having 10,000 people looking at what you're doing and critiquing it and asking you questions is going to help you improve the work and build upon it. Nonetheless, she has kind of run into a number of conflicts and challenges over the years. Um, she did have a run in with Microsoft. Um, Microsoft have taken uh, a very proprietary approach to the copyright protection of computer software and they have also relied upon trade secrets and patents and other forms of intellectual property. In 2010, a decade ago, Microsoft adopted Connect, an accessory which enabled players to control um, Xbox 360 games by moving their bodies. In response, Lady Ada posted a challenge on her company's blog to provide a prize of $3,000 to the first person who would be able to unlock Connect's motion sensors. And there was much media interest in this reverse engineering. Uh, Microsoft were unhappy. Microsoft said rather sniffily, Microsoft does not condone the modification of its products. With Connect, Microsoft built in numerous hardware and software safeguards designed to reduce the chances of product tampering. Microsoft will continue to make advances in these types of safeguards and will work closely with law enforcement and product safety uh, groups to keep Connect tamper resistant. Um, subsequently, Microsoft relented from its hard stance and said that no one would get in trouble through making open source drivers. And there perhaps has been a bit of a mellowing in Microsoft of late uh, under Satya uh, Nadella about its approach to open source software and also open um, source hardware as well. Uh, as part of the open source hardware association, uh, there has been uh, an effort to give voice to community concerns about developments in relation to copyright law. Um, so as I have previously spoken about, a really fundamental Supreme Court of the United States decision was in the Star Athletica case versus Varsity Brands, which was about copyright protection of cheerleading outfits and very controversially, the majority decision took a very broad view and said that even these cheerleading outfits could be the subject of copyright protection. Um, Justice Breyer kind of pinned a dissent, uh, but the Open Source Hardware Association was involved um, providing a friend of the court brief, and it kind of noted that a large percentage of open hardware source software combines both creative and functional elements. And they were kind of concerned uh, about the potential impact of the decision. They said that a high bar to conceptual separability serves fundamental interests of individuals and the public. And it was contended that creative consumers of all stripes depend on limited copyright 
in useful articles. Um, the submission observed that styles of clothing at issue in this case implicate basic rights of speech and association. And they also maintain that copyright um, in useful articles should be limited in a profound way because that would advance creativity and beneficial um, competition. So the Open Source Software Foundation have been very concerned about the expansion of subject matter that has been protected by copyright, particularly for a business like Adafruit Industries uh, with its various electronic toys and games. You can see how some of those products might get caught up um, in a broader approach to copyright subject matter. Uh, but unfortunately that decision ha has been in place and has been applied in other uh, circumstances, including the rather ridiculous case involving banana costumes and outfits. Um, and I think there's a kind of a genuine anxiety within the 3D printing community and the Open Source Software Foundation uh, Association about um, the scope of that decision and how it might affect a range of other uh, forms of activities that they're involved in. Uh, the Open Source Hardware Association and others have also been concerned about the push for an expansion of intermediary liability under copyright law. There's a US Copyright Office report that's wanting to change the old Digital Millennium Copyright Act safe harbours regime and tilt the system in favour of copyright owners. That, of course, would affect intermediaries like Adafruit. Um, there's also been a challenge to the technological protection measures regime and the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Andrew Bunny Huang has led that challenge. Uh, and thus far, it's been slowly wending its way through the courts. Um, you know, one of the challenges is still going ahead, but the courts have cut back a number of the grounds that have been made in the challenges to that regime. In addition to questions about copyright law, open source hardware also has to deal with trademark challenges. Um, so Adafruit, amongst other things, has engaged in trademark registrations in relation to some of its key products. Uh, traditionally, open source software often relied upon trademarks. So think of Red Hat, for instance. Uh, the computer code was open, but they relied upon the trademark of Red Hat. In a similar fashion, the open source hardware community has relied upon trademarks to brand their products. Um, so, for instance, Adafruit sells things like Circuit, Playground Express, uh, a Raspberry Pi model, uh, another Raspberry Pi model. Uh, but they said that they have taken an open source approach and have taken out certain trademarks. Uh, but the trademark register, unfortunately, is very cluttered with a, ho a whole wide range of different trademarks. And Adafruit kind of sought a trademark in relation to Flora um, and then um, got into a dispute with Linko, which is a lightning, uh, lighting uh, company, uh, which also had a trademark in relation to Flora. Um, so Adafruit asked um, the US District Court for a declaratory judgment in its dispute with Linko. Um, and it wanted to stress that its uh, mark Flora and its design did not constitute trademark infringement or unfair competition and it wanted to get rid of the uh, trademark held um, by this California lighting company. Uh, but to my mind, that just kind of highlights um, the very cluttered and messy state of the trademark register at the moment. When I kind of searched, um, there were a good score of different trademarks in different goods and services related to the term flora. Uh, but there's also been sometimes a few turf wars in relation to trademarks around open source trademarks. So the Open Source Hardware Association um, had to distinguish its mark 
um, from the open source initiatives, Mark. Um, so there have been some ructions and tensions within the open source community about what is open, what brands mean what, what marks meet what. Uh, uh, but that particular dispute seems to be resolved. Uh, the Open Source Hardware Association has also had to grapple with design patents. Um, Professor Sarah Bernstein from the University of Oklahoma um, has done a wonderful job doing visual illustrations of all the weird and wonderful design patents that are registered. Um, but there have been a lot of concerns about the quality of the design patents that have been granted, particularly in the US system. Uh, a particular case that the Open Source Hardware Association was in involved in as a friend of the court was the dispute between Curva Luxembourg Incorporated versus Home Expressions Incorporated. And the case involved Curva Luxembourg applying for a design patent on a wicker pattern for furniture. Um, so the association intervened in this case because they are kind of concerned that these sorts of patents could affect open source hardware development. Um, and the association commented, a large percentage of open source hardware combines both ornamental and functional elements and industrial design routinely involves applying design concepts, concepts from disparate fields in novel ways. And, and they were kind of concerned about the potential impact of a broad approach to design patents on open source hardware development. So I think that was a really interesting intervention. And in May 2019, um, the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit has um, held that because we agree with the district court that the claim language Ornamental design for a pattern of a chair limits the scope of the claim design in this case. We affirm, accordingly, we affirm the district court's grant of home expressions motion to dismiss the complaint for a failure to state a plausible claim of design patent infringement. But much like the trademark regime, the cluttering of the design patents regime, I think poses certain issues in relation to open source hardware. Um, there are similar concerns in relation to patent law. Uh, President Barack Obama was very interested in the maker movement and hosted his own White House maker fair, uh, but he also had fireside hangouts on Google. And at one of those hangouts, Lady Ada appeared and was one of the um, conversationalists with President Obama. And she really kind of pressed President Obama on the need for patent law reform. So she kind of said, on the topic of legislation, I'm an entrepreneur and, we, and think that startups are an important engine of the American economy. But when I go around and talk to other entrepreneurs, what I hear is that they worry that if they're successful, they're going to be targeted by software patent trolls. In response, President Barack Obama provided a partial defense of his record in respect of patent law reform. Um, but he said that, you know, we need some additional consensus on some smarter uh, patent laws. Um, and noted that there was a mixture of policy objectives at stake. As Professor Mark Lemley has noted, patent law has often been very resistant to law reform in its own way. Uh, there's also been a recognition of the work of Lady Ada by President Obama. Before he left the presidency, he kind of recognised her contributions as a champion of change and said that you and your fellow champions embody the change you want to see in the world. Together we will out-innovate, out-educate and out-build the rest of the world to keep our country strong. Notably, there's been a lot of interest of late in terms of patent pledges and taking pledges not to assert patents against competitors. Um, and Adafruit has kind of been interested in this model of trying to limit the enforcement of patents. Um, Adafruit Industries um, has decided to um, join protective 
networks of royalty-free cross-licenses and subscribes the open network licence. Um, moreover, Lemma Freed, as a kind of an experimentation, has taken out one patent in relation to a coordinated wearable lighting system. Um, so there seems to be some also some pragmatic experimentations about what you can do with the patent system to try to ward off patent infringement actions by others. Um, but the open source um, Hardware Association has also been involved as a friend of the court in relevant disputes like the big battle over patent exhaustion in Lexmark versus Impression Products. Uh, so lots of interesting tensions there between patents and open source hardware. Um, I like the kind of phrase, friends don't let friends patent rounded corners and totes open and no patent pending open source, source hof, uh, hardware. Uh, but I also think there's some fundamental challenges in relation to trade secrets and open source hardware as well. Um, the United States government has ramped up the protection of trade secrets, both in terms of civil remedies and in respect of criminal offences. Uh, Obama signed the Defend Trade Secrets Act, uh, which I think provides much more stronger protection of trade secrets. Um, the Trans-Pacific Partnership provides for civil remedies and criminal offences in relation to trade secrets. Uh, the Trump administration has pushed in trade negotiations for much stronger protection of trade secrets as well. There's been a concern that overprotection of trade secrets might have adverse impacts upon creativity, innovation and competition. And I think the Open Source Hardware Association, Aid of Fruit Industries, is kind of concerned by this very proprietary approach to knowledge and think that that may interrupt some of the networks of information exchange and knowledge exchange that leads to true innovation. You know, Orly LaBelle wrote a good book called Talent Wants to be Free, Why We Should Learn to Love Leaks, Raids and Free Riding. And her point was that Silicon Valley was built upon an open culture of sharing and she fears that non-compete clauses and the use of trade secrets and intellectual property may dampen that kind of necessary knowledge exchange and information exchange. To conclude, I think the example of Lady Ada is uh, an important and inspirational one on many levels. Um, in many ways, I think um, uh, Adafruit Industries and Lady Ada have engaged with a lot of the key developments of late in relation to copyright law, trademark law, designs law, patent law and trade secrets. They've tried to pragmatically respond to some of the efforts made by IP owners to expand rights. They've participated in friend of the court submissions to try to influence key precedents. Um, but they have also pushed and lobbied decision makers like President Barack Obama to think differently about how they approach intellectual property law and intellectual property reform. In addition for, to advocating for open source solutions and intellectual property law reform, Lima Freed has also advocated for better inclusion and diversity in STEM disciplines. And I think that has also been a very important moment. Uh, Lady Ada and the Adafruit Industries has also been part of the community building efforts in the open source hardware movement. Uh, there's been a really interesting open source hardware weather report just published by Clarissa Redwine and Michael Weinberg. They look at some of the strengths of open source hardware, some of its limitations, some of its unresolved issues and problems, and some of the future challenges. The other really important note to make is that Adafruit Industries had to pivot rather dramatically and suddenly during the coronavirus pandemic and shifted to making um, personal protective equipment and medical device components 
and was classified as an essential service and a manufacturing business under the New York City Executive Order. Um, Adafruit Industries um, is also playing a role for preparing for a COVID recovery in the United States. And later, ADA has been appointed to the Small Business Sector Advisory Council by the City of New York to help restart the New York City economy post-COVID-19 pandemic. And I think the public health crisis has certainly highlighted the role of the maker movement and open source hardware in local manufacturing. So that is all. Thank you very much.